Camp Tuesday participated in practice wearing a certified helmet. According to his head coach, John Gruden, Brown is all in. Seems Antonio's all in since he's here. Is that a joke or what? Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah he's in. He's all in. That's what he said. Is it a new helmet? It, it's a certified helmet, Vic. So he's, he's all in, ready to go. That's, that's my understanding. It's not been a distraction to me at all. I mean, I hate to break it to anybody, but we, we've known what, what, what the status is regarding his feet. He just showed up with frostbite. I've never had a guy show up with frostbite. Uh, and fortunately, we got that thing under control. And this grievance thing is, is no laughing matter. It's something that's really important to him. And there's nothing wrong with supporting your players. Okay, it's no laughing matter, but that was really funny vintage John Gruden. Let's get Dan Graziato back in here. And Dan, you were with us Monday. We talked a ton about Antonio Brown. So what's your reaction to this latest news that he is finally wearing a certified helmet? Well, it's going in the right direction. And we were there on Monday. We were talking to his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, and Greeny asked a question, you know, if you can't get your helmet approved, if he can't get his helmet approved, uh, it, what, what, would the, what would the next step be? So if he's wearing a certified helmet in practice that isn't the one he wants, then that's a good step in the right direction because that means he's trying things out. Maybe he wore a helmet yesterday, he doesn't like it. He's going to try a different one today. Remember, there are 34 different helmets on the approved list by the NFL and the NFLPA. So he has the opportunity to experiment and find one that works for him. I'm sure the Raiders wish he had started that experimenting a little bit earlier, but he didn't, and that's where we are. So Josina's report on the grievance is interesting because he makes the case that he wasn't given a full year to change his helmet because his helmet wasn't on the banned list, which because it was more than 10 years old is automatically banned. So if he were to win that, which I doubt, then he gets a year to figure it out. But the fact that he's using these current days, these upcoming weeks to try and figure out what he would do if he doesn't get his way with his helmet is an encouraging sign for the Raiders because that means he's at least entertaining the possibility that he doesn't get what he wants, but he has to play anyway. So I don't think we've heard the last of this. <laughs> But uh, I think it's at least moving in the right direction right now. Yeah, you kind of wonder what other twists and turns this could take. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dan Graziano and Greeny. On Monday, Drew Rosenhaus, AB's agent, did tell us that he would show up soon to practice. Yeah, and, and with AB, there are always twists and turns to come. And that would be my biggest concern if I'm watching this. If you watched Hard Knocks last night, then you see Antonio Brown and John Gruden. They seem to be on the same page. They seem to be happy. He said his feet are, for the most part, okay. So I will ask you, do you believe... This is all good now. It's behind them. They can go forward, and it will no longer be a problem. Oh, yeah. They're going to deal with this for two or three years until they don't have to anymore. And, look, here's the thing. Like, A.B. is coming there to provide a service, to be prolific at the wide receiver spot. John Gruden understands the type of person and personality he's dealing with. The production has made way for Antonio Brown to be a part of the Oakland Raiders. But John Gruden was in a desperate situation. And A.B. was the guy that he identified as the answer to that desperate situation. So, yeah, they'll deal with this, and John Gruden will be cool. You know damn well John Gruden ain't cool with a dude sitting out of practice because he don't have a helmet. Like, don't get on television and try to fool us about that. But because it's A.B., and because of what he's going to provide as far as wide receiver, you have to deal with that and say the right things as a head coach. You know, there's a great mathematical formula in every NFL front office. Production equals tolerance. <laughs> and because of his production, there's a lot of tolerance going on right now. But I'll tell you this, continuity matters, guys. And if this was a year ago in Pittsburgh, it's not a big deal because he had a million reps with Ben Roethlisberger. If this was a year later and he had a year under his belt with Derek Carr, it'd be okay. The fact that they've never played together, that's a concern. Between Frostbite, the helmet, he needs every rep, every walkthrough. So there's a lot of tolerance because we think the production's going to be really high. But at some point, that's going to flip on itself. And, and you know when that I, I can see as I'm watching that yesterday, I'm just envisioning being the coach of a football team, which obviously I've never been. But you got 53 guys you have to deal with. If one player takes up as much of your energy as that guy does, I can see that it gets to a point where you just say, I can't do it anymore. Absolutely. And that's what happened in Pittsburgh, right? It, I just can't do this anymore. It, that Exactly what happened. And if John Gruden at some point is going to get to that point, but right now he can't afford to. They right. need to win. So that's another team with <laughs> the share of headaches. There's one that may have taken a turn yesterday, and I'm not exactly sure where it's going. Let's figure that out. Laura. Yeah, you guys are talking about production and tolerance. That also applies to the Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott, but no shortage of headlines coming out of Cowboys camp. 
Tuesday, we received news that Amari Cooper likely not playing in the preseason game because of a heel injury. He's hopefully can practice by the end of the week. Also got word that Dallas is extending linebacker Jalen Smith, giving him the third most guaranteed money among current contracts for an inside linebacker. And with Ezekiel Elliott still holding out, Jerry Jones responded yesterday to claims from Elliott's agent that he and his client found Jones' Zeke who joke disrespectful. Look, I've earned the right with Zeke to joke. Period. I've earned it. So, have you guys had any conversations since then at all? No. No. Okay. But let me be real clear about it. I've earned that right to joke. Wow. Jerry is mad. And that's not something I thought I saw coming here. And we had a great conversation. You played for the Cowboys. You know this man. What did that look like to you? It just became personal. And it's personal beyond a contract negotiation. And here's the thing. Zeke has a right to feel disrespected, just as well as Jerry has the feeling and the right to make a joke thinking that that relationship was what it needed to be in order for him to have an opportunity to make that joke. But here's the deal. There are two sides that I don't like about this. I don't like the fact that Jerry did that said that like that, like Zeke is supposed to just be like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, for feeling disrespected. No, that's how you felt, right? So that, that's Jerry and his anger based on the response from Arsenal and Zeke Elliott. And then on the flip side, Jerry has had Zeke's back through a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. So that's what gave him the, the thought process and the validity to make a joke about Zeke who. So this is playing into two things. I can't tell Zeke not to feel disrespected, not to feel disrespected, even though I don't think that that was the intent, and I think it's sensitive. And also, I don't have, I don't necessarily blame Jerry for feeling upset about Zeke having that reaction based on their history and how he stood on the table for him in certain situations. I'll tell you what, if we went back a year ago and we sat here and we talked about Le'Veon Bell, we'd all say like, hey, you know what? They're going to figure out. Le'Veon Bell's a Pittsburgh Steeler. He's not going to not play this year. And at some point, that worm turned. And I'm not saying we're there yet, but I agree with what Marcus just said, which is the worm may be starting a little bit in terms of this is getting personal. And, guys, I went through it on national TV with Darrell Revis. I had this unspeakable feeling and emotion of, like, could he really sit out the year? And it really made you start, like, question yourself. Like, we got a big issue here, and we got to get Revis signed. And, look, Jerry Jones isn't saying it, but that's what he's feeling. Like, would this guy really sit out a year? And this is how these problems start manifesting themselves. And that's what happened in Pittsburgh a year ago. Here's what I think is going on. And you made this point before, and I want you to make sure that everybody hears it about ego. Because ego comes into play with a lot of things. And who has the biggest one? Oh, yeah. Jerry's ego is big as anybody's. Like, it, it, that's what you saw in that clip, yes, G. Yes. Like, you, you saw. That was a punch to the gut when Arsenal said they felt disrespectful. And now Jerry is like, you ain't winning this battle. Like, I'm, I write the checks, this, and that's how he's always – we can go through the history of Jerry Jones and the cop from Jimmy Johnson getting fired, from what he, him letting Tom Landry go. Like, th begin, this is Jerry's ego. Hey. Once you tap into that, it becomes more than – There's just a point I have to make here. I, this has to be said. I said it in an essay on the air last week. Jerry Jones holds all of the cards here, and he absolutely could if he wants to. Say to Zeke Elliott and his agent – if you ever want to get paid to play football again, you have to show up here. If Zeke Elliott doesn't ever come back, he never becomes a free agent. So it is really Jerry Jones, and I said this last week, I think you play a little bit on the fact that he does care about his plays. He doesn't want to do that to Zeke. But that face, yeah. that, that anger that I saw there, that looked like a guy who might just call him up and say, oh, you're hurt by my joke? Well, either come in here and, pay, and play for what I'm paying you, or you're never getting paid to play this game again. And it's not, there is no coincidence here that Jalen Smith got done yesterday. I'm telling you, like, actions speak louder than words. And he was pissed. And he's like, watch this. I'm going to get Jalen Smith signed. And I wouldn't be shocked if Dak Prescott or Mari Cooper got uh, fast-tracked. And Zeke, we'll get you done when I'm ready to do it. And like you said, Greet, where are you going to go? Look, they're a lot better when he's on the field. They're a Super Bowl contender. But at the end of the day, Jalen Smith getting done yesterday was not a coincidence. I, I, look, everything could wind up just fine. If I had to bet on this, I would still bet that before the season starts, we will see a picture of Jerry and Zeke Gee, real, together smiling and fine. Real quick, I tell people all the time, you can't negotiate with the people that own the mountain. You can negotiate with the diamond dealer that the diamond came out, that the mountain the diamond came out of, but the person that owned the mountain, 
Ain't no negotiating once you get to this feeling. Right. Right? So now it's about control, and it's about who's going to win. And if you put Jerry in that mindset, usually he comes out on top. It, it is possible that this took a turn yesterday. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see it coming. I still think it will work out okay, but it doesn't feel like a certainty. All right, let's get up and go. A lot of other things to get to. Baseball, Anthony Davis.